Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be changing the hydrostatic transmission fluid of my Toro Titan HD. Uh, a relatively simple thing to do, it needs to be done every so often. The initial Toro recommends you do it at 75 hours. I'm at about 50 and I'm just going to go ahead and do it a little bit early because the season is starting just so I don't have to worry about doing this again for a very long time. Now obviously Toro is the manufacturer of the uh, mower itself, but Hydro Gear is the company that manufactures the hydrostatic transmissions. Hydro Gear is a very big company, a very good reputation. They make probably some, some of the best uh, hydrostatics in the world. Uh, and there's a couple of different ways to both go about doing this and the materials you can use. So I'm going to use the Toro method. Um, just a real quick overview. Uh, Hydro Gear does make actual uh, change kits for these where it has the fluids, the filters, hardware, everything you need in a box ready to rock and roll. Um, I believe that their kit gives you a 250 hour interval. Uh, but their procedure for doing it is a little bit more involved than the Toro way because basically they want you to manually fill each transmission rather than just filling it from the reservoir at the top, which is what Toro recommends. And I think that's a little bit of an easier way to do it. So like I said, I'm going to use the Toro way. Now, as far as what Toro recommends, you can buy uh, ready-to-go kits from Toro. But what essentially I'm going to do is I'm going to use the original style uh, Hydro Gear commercial filters, part number 52114, and it also says it. Uh, on the filter itself and i'm going to be using their hyper oil 500. now if you use this hyper oil 500 that gives you a 500 hour uh service interval for this which they also have recommended in their maintenance book now you can also use mobile one 15w50 synthetic engine oil and that gives you a 250 hour interval now i probably wouldn't go 500 especially being residential it would probably take me 10 15 years to to cover 500 hours anyway but this is a better quality oil i don't exactly know what the difference is but if they're recommending this is twice the life i'm just going to go with this anyway it's probably a better quality uh, oil than the the mobile one at 500 hours this should last uh, a very very long time so i'm basically going to do their method like i said um with them, you don't have to manually fill each transmission the way Toro recommends. You can just fill everything from the uh, reservoir on the top of the mower, and they only have a single reservoir, so it makes it a little bit easier. You just have to crack open the uh, port plugs on the top, which I'll show, just so the air is able to better uh, escape the transmission, because inevitably you're going to get air in the transmission when you open it up to service it, and you're going to have to go through a bleed procedure, which I'll discuss. Pretty easy, really not too hard, not involved. Um, and then as far as what tools you're going to need to do this, um, to get the filter guard off, you're going to need a, a 3 a wrench or ratchet like this. The 11 16 wrench, this is gonna, I'm going to use this to crack open the, uh, the top port plugs on the top of the transmission. A uh, strap wrench for getting the filters off and obviously a drain plug to do it. Uh, those are for the most part the tools that you're going to need to do this. Now, this can vary a little bit the way, the way this, it's set up on the transmission. This is a, a ZT3100 on this. Um, some have the, the fill plugs on the top of it, some have them on the side. Again, that can vary. You definitely want to just uh, consult with your owner's manuals. It will go over which, uh, what style and how it's set up. Now, this setup and this kit, I believe, works for uh, the ZT2800 up to the ZT3600, I believe. And then when you go above that into the four and 5000 series transmissions, it has a cartridge style, which is a little bit different, but fortunately Hydro Gear keeps it pretty simple and uh, they really have two different styles. So pretty much if you're a uh, residential or even into the medium duty commercial, you're gonna have this. And then if you're into the really super high end commercial, we have the cartridge filters, which is like the 4400 and, and the 5400 transmission. Um, that would be a different kit and a different setup. But overall, um, just consult the owner's manual before you go ahead and purchase or order anything just to make sure you have the right one. But this, these filters, I believe, fit uh, most of their, uh, their spin-off style transmission. So let's go ahead and get started and take care of that. All right, so I already got everything draining, as you can see. I took off the filter guards, just three, uh, those three bolts hold them on. Uh, if you're not sure what trans you have, typically it'll say it on the filter guard, so that's the transmission that I have. I want to take the guards off. The transmissions are exposed and uh, you basically just take them off the same way you would take off any uh, oil filter on a car. It just spins off. Um, there is no actual oil drain. You basically drain the oil by taking off the filters as you can see. Now the system holds about four and a half quarts so just make sure you have an appropriate size oil pan. Uh, fortunately mine's big enough and it can actually reach both transmissions at the same time. So basically yeah they just uh, spin on and off and you know the more you take it off the faster it's going to drain so i'll just give it a few minutes to drain 
And up top is the port plug. I don't know if you can see it. It's a little dark down here, but right up here, my fingers, it, that's the top port plug. Now, essentially, when I start to fill the transmission, I'm just going to crack it loose to act as a vent so that the uh, air can easily escape the system rather than having to go all the way up top to the reservoir. Oh, and before you start draining the oil, just make sure that you crack the reservoir cap just so it can uh, breathe a little bit easier and the oil can drain a little bit smoother. So I'll just go ahead and let this drain for a few more minutes, and then I will get ready to button everything up. All right, getting ready to button everything back up again. Again, just like doing an oil change on a car, um, make sure when you take the old filters off, and these happen to just say OEM on them, so you know if they're original or not, make sure the original gasket comes off, because if you double gasket it, it's not going to sit right, and it's going to just blow oil everywhere and make a total mess. So uh, these sit sideways. I wouldn't fill them up all the way. Fill them up about halfway. Let the, uh, the pleating absorb the oil, and then make sure you put a nice, clean ring of oil on the new filter and then make sure on the actual uh, transmission housing itself make sure you nice, take a nice clean rag wipe that off so you have a nice clean mating surface uh, it's basically done draining now so I'm just going to go ahead and throw the uh, the oil filters back on and then we'll go ahead and start filling it up alright so I got the new oil filters on they just spin on like any other oil filter again make sure that mating surface is nice and clean and when you put them on as stated on the filter itself once the gasket makes contact with the housing you want to do three quarters to one full turn of the filter itself don't go crazy don't tighten the heck out of this thing um, otherwise you could deform the gasket and uh, and cause yourself to have some problems with it leaking now as far as what I was saying before about the port plugs now these are the top Again, it can vary a little bit on your transmission. This right here is the top port plug. So essentially, we're just going to crack that loose so that as we're filling the transmission, uh, the air has a place to escape rather than having to work its way all the way out the hoses and the reservoir at the top. So it'll fill a little bit nice, a little bit smoother. Again, you have the one on the same side. This is a 1116 uh, bolt. So I'll just crack that loose. And then once oil starts to sort of drip out of there a little bit, Go ahead and close it up. It's now to that level and you will continue to fill it through the reservoir on the top. And what's nice about a lot of these tools, not all of them, but a lot of them, they have a single reservoir as opposed to two. So you just have the single reservoir at the top. Uh, like I said before, make sure this was cracked. I wouldn't take it off because then debris and junk can fall in there. So uh, you have on here a full cold line. Usually when you're using the mower after it's hot, it goes up considerably, usually to about here where it says hydro gear on the uh, the expansion tank itself uh, but usually that full cold is about where you want to get now once you go through the bleeding procedure the level is going to drop it's it's you're going to have to do a bleeding procedure I'll, like i said i'll cover that that's not uh too hard to do all right so almost done filling it actually was uh, taking quite a while leaving the plugs so i just went ahead and pulled them out they weren't uh too hard to get them out the rest of the way just make sure the o-ring is not uh damaged on them uh, it's still taking quite a while, but it's going significantly faster than it was. It just takes a while for all that air to work its way out. I just want to make sure I get as many bubbles out as possible before I go ahead and go through the purging procedure. But I will leave the filter guards off when I'm uh, getting all the air out of the system just to make sure there's no actual leaks from the oil filters themselves. And then once that's done, I'll go ahead and put it on. So I'm almost done with this uh, gallon. Uh, that should bring it up to pretty close to about where it needs to be, and then I'll just finish filling it the rest of the way with that single quart I have over there. All right, got everything buttoned back up again. Those two top port plugs you torque to 15 pounds, so don't go crazy. Uh, just a side note, the right side transmission fills up a lot quicker than the left side does, so just be aware of that. Uh, when it's full, it starts coming out pretty quick, so just uh, be ready. Make sure you have a pan underneath so you don't make a mess. And just, like I said, tighten both sides to 15-foot uh, pounds. A little over full right now. That's okay. Still got to do a uh, the bleed procedure. Uh, I'll just explain it. It also states how to do it in the manual. Uh, you're going to want to go ahead and get the back drive tires off of the ground because you're going to have to um, spin them under a no-load condition. So basically, uh, jack stands or something just to support the back of the mower. You're basically going to uh, make sure everything's buttoned up, closed up. You're going to... Uh, first, you're going to do the first part of the bleed procedure uh, with the uh, transmissions in bypass mode. So every mower is a little bit different the way you put it uh, into bypass mode. Uh, with these mowers, on the bottom here, you have this nut here, and then you're going to loosen this, which they will get tight after a while. 
All right, this one I'm probably gonna have to put a wrench on because this one's pretty tight. But essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna loosen this and pull this back, which you can see from the top, this bolt will slide back. When it's in this back position, uh, the transmission's disengaged. So the wheels will not turn when you engage the lever. So essentially what you could do is put this into bypass mode back here, start the engine running it at half throttle, put the parking brake off, and you're going to engage both transmissions on both sides, and you're gonna slowly cycle them forward and backwards half a dozen times. So you're gonna do it both sides together, you know, forward, backward, very slowly, don't go too fast, just cycle them both like that, Put them back into the neutral position, gauge parking brake, turn the engine off, go ahead, uh, check your oil level, make sure it's still uh, high enough where you're not gonna run dry and pull air into the system. Then you're going to take that transmission and re-engage it forward. That will engage the drive system and you're going to repeat that process. The only thing different is the wheels will turn. Just the, you have to make sure the wheels are off the ground, not touching anything when you do this, because the wheels will turn under a no load condition. So again, you're gonna start the mower half throttle, get on, gauge the transmissions forward and backwards half a dozen times. And your wheels are gonna spin just nice and slow. And after you've done it about six times, go ahead, turn the mower off, park and brake back on get off and check the level, and that should cover um, your bleeding procedure. If you're having issues where you're still getting bubbles and it, one side may be not engaging correctly, you may have to repeat this process until all the air is out of the system. So um, you might have to do it more than one time depending on the conditions you run into and if you have to have a little bit of reserve air in the system, but just make sure that your levels top is off to at least the full cold level. You wanna have it pretty close to, so you don't accidentally suck air into the, uh, into the mower and then you have to start all over again. So that's basically the bleed procedure, pretty simple. Um, again, it's in the Toro manual. This is the Titan HD page uh, 68 is the bleeding procedure. And that's uh, a standard procedure, whether you check the video from Hydro Gear or you go by the Toro manual. I'll also put in the link in the description below um, Hydro Gear's video on both how to change a fluid and how to bleed the system. A pretty good informative video. It basically just covers exactly what I just did uh, and in the same fashion. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.